Happy first Sunday, church family, and a special happy birthday, Brian. Thank you. We had a phenomenal time celebrating Black History Month with this year's theme, African Americans and the Arts. Now we are in the midst of Lenten season, where we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Church family, don't forget that we are in the midst of an election season. Please remember, it is our civic duty to vote. A voteless people is a hopeless people, and every election is determined by the people who show up. We believe in the words of our former President Barack Obama, there's no such thing as a vote that doesn't matter. I'm Brian Keith Robeson II. And I am Jasmine Yates, and this is your Avenue News. News. Are you recovering from a divorce or going through a separation? Whether it has been one month or 10 years, divorce can leave you scared and broken. The loss can be devastating and cause you to hold on to emotions like anger, guilt, and shame. Divorce Care is a support network that helps participants recover by studying the Word of God while experiencing His peace, healing, and restoration. This is your season to find new hope. Meetings are held every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Register today on the church website. Join the Domestic Violence Awareness Ministry for a safe haven to share, heal, and find faith-based support. The Domestic Violence Awareness Support Group will meet every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Let's embrace strength, break silence, and build a path for its restoration. You are not alone. Come and find solace in the community that cares. Healing begins with understanding, and together, we can overcome. Calling all singles. We are inviting you to an interest meeting for the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church Singles Ministry. This meeting is for single adults of all ages. Join us on Saturday, April 6th at 10 a.m. here on the church campus as we seek to plan for the future. Are you a business owner with a great product or service you'd like to share with your church family? There is a Wheeler Avenue business directory that is managed by the Financial Empowerment Ministry. This online platform allows active members of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church the opportunity to advertise their business at no cost. Don't wait, expand, connect, promote. Submit your business information today. Visit our websites or scan the QR code or email business directory at wheelerbc.org to begin the process. The Wheeler Avenue Tutoring Ministry is thriving and available virtually to assist elementary school through college students. Tutoring sessions take place on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Please visit the church website to register and access Zoom links. Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church is excited to partner with the Houston Grand Opera to bring back our annual favorite, Giving Voice, and celebrate black women's voices in opera. Hosted by ABC 13 journalist and WABC's very own Melanie Lawson, Giving Voice will feature songs sung by operatic soloists, including incredible Grammy Award-winning mezzo-soprano and HGO Henri Marietta Simpson. Grammy Award-winning soprano LaTanya Moore, barrier-breaking tenor Lemmy Pulliam, distinguished baritone Justin Austin, and two current members of HGO's Butler Studio, soprano Renee Richardson and tenor Demetrius Sampson Jr. WABC will be honoring our First Lady, Audrey Marie Cosby, founding First Lady, Audrey Lawson, female charter members, and our first female minister of music, Juanita Nash. This is a free event and ticket reservation is required with a limit of two tickets per order. Reserve your seats now. Attention graduating high school seniors. It is now time to apply for the WABC Educational Grants. This year, all applications must be completed online. Visit the events page on our website to view a complete list of this year's educational grant requirements and the application. The deadline is Friday, May 31st at 5 p.m. Additionally, please register on our website for the mandatory in-person educational retreat on April 6th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get ready for a double dose of celebration with the Wheeler Avenue Youth Ministry. Saturday, March 9th, join us for a youth picnic and field day from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. But wait, there's more. Sunday, March 10th, put on your Sunday best and join us for youth church at 8 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Let's come together to praise God for the amazing journey of the past two years and greater things ahead. Are you caring for someone with mild or moderate case of dementia? Are there times you have a doctor's appointment, need to run errands, or just need a break? 
Journey on the Avenue is available to care for loved ones starting in April. For more information, contact Reverend Jock Dinkins. There's so much taking place and we hope you get connected. For more information, follow us on Flock Notes, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or our app. I'm Jasmine Yates. And I'm Brian Keith Robeson II. And this has been your Avenue News. And remember, we are Wheeler, wherever.
Father, every time we have a chance, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. And it's to that God that we have the opportunity to take our petitions and our prayers to. He's a faithful God. He's a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. What I love is he can do something about our circumstance. I can tell my friends anything, but they can't do nothing. He's a great God. I'm sorry. Yeah. We invite you at this time, take your chosen prayer posture. Take it to the Lord in prayer, whatever it is. We ask that you would look to the screens on, as you are able for those that are bereaved, those that are health concerned. We invite you to pray for someone this week. We give praise and honor just to have our founding pastor here with us today. that we want to announce to you this week. Services for Brother Stephen Bonnier II will be this Thursday, March the 7th, here in the sanctuary. Visitation will be at 10, 15, and the memorial service will begin at 11. Likewise, we have sister, uh, services for Sister Helen Campbell this Saturday, March the 9th, again in the sanctuary. Visitation at 10, service at 11, and there is a complete listing of congregational care concerns on the website uh, as you're able to look during the week. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. God, great and mighty are you, oh God. We give you praise because you are a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. You are light in the darkness, oh God. We give you praise for that. God, we thank you as redeemer, oh God. Thank you for redeeming our souls. You knew we were sin sick and knew we needed a savior. Thank you, oh God, that you made provision for us through your son, Jesus the Christ. And we come and celebrate his life today, oh God, and commemorate his work on the cross, oh God, on our behalf, God. We thank you that we no longer have to sacrifice animals and birds and doves. We thank you, oh God, that he was the perfect sacrifice and met it once and for all. God, we give you praise for the opportunity to come before you in worship, oh God. Thank you that you've made our hands available to us and our feet available to us and our arms, oh God, that we can wave our arms and praise you in fullness. You told us to give you the dance and to give you the praise, oh God. So we come before you today offering our perfect praise to you as best we can, oh God, knowing we're not worthy, oh God, but we thank you, oh God, that you have made yourself a sacrifice for us. We come before you now, lifting up every need in this room, oh God, and there are many, oh God. I lift up every bereaved family, God. I thank you that you're a comforter, you're a peacemaker, oh God, and I pray peace and comfort for those families. I ask that you would regulate minds, oh God, as they deal with the death and loss and transition, navigate a new circumstance with their loved ones, oh God. I pray now a blessing upon each family, oh God, as they go through that uh, season of bereavement, oh God, knowing that you're right with them. I pray a blessing upon those who are health concerned, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you're the great physician, the great physician, the healer, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that you're an ophthalmologist and you're an oncologist. I thank you that you are a way maker in even the lives of our, in our bodies, oh God. I thank you there is nothing that is too hard for you, God, so heal as only you know how, oh God. 
I pray a blessing upon every person under the sound of my voice. Thank you, O oh God, for returning our, our founding pastor to us, O oh God. Thank you for his presence in this place, O oh God. I thank you for his caregivers, and I thank you for his daughters, O oh God. I thank you for his grandchildren, all those that are concerned for him. We, as a body of Christ, are grateful for his presence here with us today. I pray now a blessing upon our pastor as he comes to preach the bread of life, O oh God. Make it that we are transformed, O oh God, as a result of the word that will go forth with power and authority, O oh God. I lift up even now his family, oh God. Thank you for his wife and thank you for his children and his mother, oh God. I thank you for the extensions of his family, oh God, that bring him so much joy. We just ask that you continue to bless and keep him. I pray a blessing upon our staff, oh God, as we continue to do the work to uphold our pastor, oh God. I pray that we would operate in excellence and support of him, oh God. Thank you for the musicians and I thank you for our minister of music and likewise all those that serve in our music and worship and arts ministry. Thank you for the great work that you're doing here. Our courtesy corps, our dancers, there's so many, oh God. You've blessed this church indeed, oh God. And so we give you praise, honor, and glory. We pray now a blessing upon the bap uh, baptismal candidates that are going forth in the waters of baptism. I pray that you would transform lives and hearts as they go into that water and come out new, oh God. We know the water doesn't change us. We pray a blessing upon their hearts that they would be changed. God, we just pray that as we watch and we uh, have the opportunity to witness it, that we would be changed likewise, that we would always focus our attention on you and be made better as a result. We give you praise for this worship service and we pray that it would be a sweet nostril, sweet aroma to your nostrils, oh God. I pray that it would go forth in beauty before you, oh God, that you would be pleased and ultimately that you would get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise as a result of the great God that you are the great things that you've done, and we look forward to the great things that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. upon the profession of your faith in him. We now baptize you, our sister, Honesty, Ariana, Elma, Cornelius, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Take me to the water, to the water. Take me to the water. privilege of baptizing the mother of our first candidate and we thank God for mother and daughter. In obedience to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you our sister Jacinda Louise Cornelius in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Righteous
happens to be the niece of the second candidate, and we thank God for this family on this Sunday morning. In obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister Talia, Mary May, Cornelius, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister dynasty marion gibson in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost amen even our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Layla Simone Jackson in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen of your faith in him. We now baptize you, our sister, Tori, Brooke, Simeon, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. upon the profession of your faith in him. We now baptize you, our sister Catania, Lene Yates, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Come 
the profession of your faith in him. We now baptize you, our sister, Michelle, Renee, Reed, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was. Upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Sterling James Fontenot, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, happy day. Oh, to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Douglas MacArthur Gibson, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, happy day. church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Antonio Javon Laws, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, happy day. Upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother, Corey, Corey, Dory, Doran, Simeon, Jr., in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, happy. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Jeffrey Austin Tisdale, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, happy day.
day church family please stand or remain standing in reverence to our scripture reading our scripture will come from 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 34 new revised standard version you may follow on the screens above or follow on your devices let us begin for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instructions when I come. Please pause for a moment of meditation. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. Please remain standing for the opening hymn. Amen. Our morning hymn is Old Rugged Cross. together on a hill far away.
where we first saw the light. Come on, thank God for the cross. We cling to, we cherish, we thank God for the old rugged cross, that emblem of suffering and shame. Thank God for the cross. This is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and be glad in it. If you're happy to be in worship on this Lord's Day, why don't you give great praise to our great God. We've already celebrated his presence, but someone may not know why we celebrate so vigorously on this Lord's Day. For 55 days, he's been unable to join us in worship for just under eight weeks. He was hospitalized, but the Lord has restored him and brought us back to church. We thank God for our founding pastor emeritus, the Reverend William Alexander Lawson. We honor him every time we get an opportunity. It is upon his shoulders that we stand. To God be the glory for bringing him back, restoring his body, healing him, touching him with the finger of love and bidding his golden moments to roll on a little while longer. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. You don't look like what you've been through. to rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, let me welcome special guests who are with us. I want to honor those special guests who are present with us. On behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, and our founding pastor emeritus. But just before we do, will you help me thank God for all of these who have gone to the waters of baptism on this day. To God be the glory for each of these. What a joy, what a blessing. We praise and honor God. Listen, we have first time friends who are here with us and I want to acknowledge them and thank God for their presence. If, you're, if this is your first time visiting Wheeler Avenue, would you stand so that we might thank God for you? Any first time visitors, amen, amen, amen. Come on church, help me give a really warm Wheeler welcome. God be praised for each of you who stands as first time guests on behalf of these two whom I have mentioned, our founding pastor, our pastor, our senior pastor, indeed on behalf of the entirety of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue. Whether you're in this space or in the sanctuary, we honor your presence among us on this day. We thank God that you've chosen to worship with us and we neither take it for granted nor lightly. If you have a church home, we, we, we ask that you will take back our warmest greetings and regards. Let your church family, let your pastor know that we were excited about your presence among us on this Sunday. However, if you do not have a church home our prayer is that you would look no further we want for you to make yourselves at home for we would love to call you our sisters or brothers in this family of faith and body of believers whatever your reality is we just thank God that you are here we can prove to you just how excited we are about your presence one more time church family help me thank God for all of our first time visitors to God be the glory. We likewise want to thank God for each of you who tunes in to worship with us virtually. We are Wheeler wherever. So wherever you are around this hour, God's globe, it is our joy to welcome you even virtually into this time of sharing. We pray that if it's your first time that you would let us know there are chats that are enabled. There are brothers and sisters in those chats who would love to greet you with the warm love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Sunday. But we thank God for you one and all. Now, church family, we are delighted to have with us special guests who are worshiping with us. Is Sister Jamie Branch in the building? Has she made it in? She may not have made it in. She is running for uh, Walla County Commissioner Precinct 3. I would say, oh, there you All right. Would you stand for us? We thank God for you, your presence among us, candidate for Commissioner Precinct 3 of Waller County, and we honor your presence among us this day. We likewise want to thank God for the presence of Amanda Edwards, who is here with us. She is running for the 18th Congressional seat of Texas, and we thank God for her present, and we thank God for the current Congresswoman for the 18th Congressional District who is running for re-election, uh, Rep Miss Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. We honor your presence among us on this day. Amen. 
I could have had a whole lot of fun just now, and I chose not to. Um, we, <laughs> we love you both, and we honor you both this day. Listen, we likewise want to thank God for the entirety of the church family on the campus of Wheeler Avenue. That's what we are. We're family one to another. Look to that sister. Look to that brother to your left, to your right. Say, I'm glad to be in worship with you. I'm glad to be in worship with you. As a matter of fact, I'm glad to be in the service one more time because he didn't have to let me live. Come on, let's celebrate, let's worship. Sunday of the month of March. 
for the wonderful privilege to gather together in the sons and daughters of the living God and to celebrate God's goodness in each one of our lives. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. And we thank God one more time. I hear you. One more time. You just never know what tomorrow might bring. So since we're here, I said, since we're here, presence of the Lord. Just give him glory right quick. I feel like dancing for just a little while. What? Hey, did we learn how to dance? Come on, come on, come on and celebrate God. Come on and celebrate Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Well, dance before the Lord with all your might. Dance before the Lord with all your might.
Everybody who has breath, praise the Lord. Everybody who has breath, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Turn towards somebody and say, I needed that. I needed that. Yep, yep, I needed that. I needed that. Needed that. Needed that. Needed that. That was good for me. That was good for me. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. What a delight. What a delight it is. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord 
and how we thank God for this wonderful privilege again. Let me share a few things with you and then we'll hear again from this magnificent music ministry and prepare for the word of God after we have given our gifts unto God. Please know that we celebrate this month as Women's History Month and we're delighted to honor the women of our community, our church, our world. We're making a difference in this world. There are some game-changing women in this church right now. And I thank God for the sisters who are among us doing the great things that they do. I told our first service that as I was thinking about Black History Month and Women's History Month, it is quite apparent to me uh, that we have these special months because all too often these special people are overlooked and undervalued. And so I want to thank God that at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, we highly regard the women of our church who are making a great difference in this world. Come on and thank God for the sisters. Come on and thank God for the sisters. Come on and thank God for the sisters. Amen. Amen. God bless you, women of God. God bless you. Praise the Lord for you. We thank God for you. Well, Tuesday is Super Tuesday because it's election day and we're grateful that we have the opportunity again to go to the polls and vote. You have heard of all those who are in the sanctuary and the cathedral rather with us right now uh, who are running for elected positions and we thank God for all of them who are present today. I likewise thank God for the wonderful opportunity that we have uh, to be reminded that there are some men and women who are running for office who take seriously their responsibilities to serve this present age and so I want to thank God for all of these who are with us today to God be the glory for them listen I know our church I know you for your works and I know that most of you have already voted I know this church and I know that most of you have already voted yep let me see the hands of all those who've already voted yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right. Well, Tuesday, we have the opportunity to finish that off, and I'm excited about that reality. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, all of whom have shared. Sister Amanda, thank you for being here. To our Congresswoman, we thank you so much for being here. And to all of those whom I did not see, but I'm told they're all across the cathedral, thank you so much for being here. The Congresswoman has reminded us all that this is a crucial time for all of us, so do not take this time lackluster in a lackluster manner don't take it in a half-hearted way let's go to the polls and let us vote because it is necessary I'm going to say a little bit more about that later on in the service but if you know that some people died so that we might have this right will you thank God for them yep yep amen amen Listen, please know, my brothers and sisters, that our Lenten season is likewise upon us. And as we are in the Lenten season, I want you, my friends, to make sure uh, that we remember that as we go through these next several weeks, this whole month is the conclusion of the Lenten season. As we go through these weeks, we are drawing closer to the Lord. Our theme is Lead Me to Calvary. And we're looking forward to all that is going to take place in this church during this month. During this month. Please know that on the fourth Sunday of this month, it will be Palm Sunday. Sunday. That's a very celebrated time here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and I certainly hope that you will be here on Palm Sunday and that all of us together who are able, who have that in our closets will wear some purple. Purple is the Lenten season liturgical color and so we'll be wearing purple as you see our preachers doing today to begin this Lenten season in, its, in a special way. We began on February 14th but to continue throughout this month we hope that you will wear purple on the fourth Sunday and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of that week we will have family group Lord's Suppers. Family group Lord's Suppers. Get to your, know your family group if you don't already and meet with them whichever day they're designated to meet and let's have a wonderful time with an intimate session, uh, intimate setting going to the table of the Lord to celebrate the, the, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then on Good Friday afternoon we'll be right here in the cathedral at 12 noon and to about 2 o'clock we'll be celebrating the reality that the Lord Jesus Christ died to redeem us from our sins. And I hope that you will come and share with us the Reverend Terry Anderson of the Lily Grove Church come to be with us on Good Friday at noon. Amen. And then on the third day 
Jesus rose and so on Resurrection Sunday we'll be here at the Lord's Church and we're excited about Resurrection Sunday I certainly hope that you will be here we will not have two services that day we understand that many people will come from different places to share with us in worship so we'll have three services that day to accommodate all those who would like to be with us we'll start early Sunday morning at 7 a.m. the first service will be at 7 a.m. for those of you who come to the 1130 service you've got a decision to make you've got a decision to make will I get up a little earlier and come to the 10 o'clock service or will I sleep a little later and come to the 1 o'clock service either way we will be here looking for you waiting for you and excited to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ so make sure you tell yourself before you go to sleep uh, on Saturday night or somewhere during the weekend I've got a choice to make either 10 a.m. or 1 p.m. all right so please be here and we're going all white this year for resurrection sunday if you're so inclined we invite you to wear all white because that is the liturgical color of resurrection and we look forward to that wednesday prayer and bible study you know how we do we start the day off on wednesdays with prayer at 6 a.m. Join us in the virtual space as we pray together for those first 20 minutes of the of the 6 o'clock hour and then join us in the sanctuary as Dr. Atukwe for you on the prayer ministry lead us in prayer at the 6 p.m. hour. Join the Reverend David Roberts in the sanctuary where he is right now with those who are in the overflow space as he teaches the word of God at both 12 noon and 7 p.m. It's going to be a great week as usual this week and the midweek we'll spend in prayer and Bible study. Well, so for some people this is their favorite announcement of all of the announcements on the first Sunday in March. She's already jumped up to celebrate and there are people jumping up all over the church because it's birthday time. Melanie didn't even realize it. Melanie didn't realize it. Birthday time. Hey, you get ready how? Come on, man. Praise the Lord for you. We praise God for you. Sister Melanie Lawson jumped up. She's the firstborn child of the Lawson family, and we celebrate with her. Matthew D. Cosby jumped up. On the first day, he turned 17. Big Matt, Matt, praise the Lord. And there are people, uh-oh, she got a whole sign. I can't see that far. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. What did you say? Uh-huh. You got a lot to celebrate. 77 years. That's where we had to go. I like it. 77 years. God bless you. Praise the Lord. She got a whole resume to read to celebrate God's goodness. And we celebrate with her. All of, Don't try that April birthday, babies. Don't try that next month. You hear me? We just go celebrate for these on, on this March day. Those in the sanctuary who are standing, we thank God for the Reverend Richard A. Boone who's standing over there, our youth minister. Come on, let's sing happy birthday to all these precious people on this third, first Sunday of March. Lift your voices. Happy birthday, happy birthday everybody. Bless you. God bless you. Praise God for you. I see you, mother. Praise God for you. Anybody celebrating today? Today is your birthday? Hey, he threw that hand up right there. God bless you. I see your hands back there. Praise God for you. Hey, hey, man, I didn't know your birthday was today. He's helping us back here. He's been working hard all day long. God bless you. I got a gift for you because you work hard every single Sunday. Praise God for all of you who are celebrating on this first Sunday of March. Well, it's offering time in the Lord's Church, and we're excited about giving. The Bible declares that God loves what kind of giver? Any cheerful givers at Wheeler Avenue this afternoon? I knew you were here. I can hear you all over the church. I praise God for you. Our dutiful courtesy court members are passing through the aisles now just in case someone needs an envelope. If you need an envelope, we invite you to receive it and then place your gift inside of it. And at the conclusion of worship, as you are leaving church, don't forget, just drop it in the drop box. That is, uh, drop one of the drop boxes lining the walls of the cathedral or the sanctuary or all the buildings where we occupy space today. And when you drop those in there, they'll be secured until such time as our church service will retrieve them and 
take good care of them. If you are using the digital platforms, we invite you to utilize those. You can see them scrolling on the screen. There are QR codes you can give by push pay. You can go to our website and give. There are multiple ways by which we're able to give unto the Lord today. We invite you to utilize one of them and let's honor the Lord with our substance, that's what the scripture says, and with the first fruits of our increase. As we honor the Lord this day with our tithes, our offerings, our gifts to the debt elimination process, and our gifts to missions and mercy. For those who are new to our church, if you don't know what missions and mercy is, we're delighted as a church family that every day of the week we can help somebody who needs the assistance of this congregation. More than 50 years ago, our founding pastor began the Missions and Mercy process. And from that day until this, we have continued to give to the less fortunate, the needy, those who need the assistance of this congregation. And your generosity helps us to do that every single day. And to God be the glory for your willingness to assist in that regard. I want to pray now over all the gifts that we bring unto the Lord. And as we pray, we honor the Lord with this substance that we bring to the Lord. And we consecrate it unto God's work and use in this place. Gracious God, we do give you thanks for the opportunity to honor you with our tithes and offerings. We thank you for the privilege to bless your holy name because we realize that you have been more than good to us. Your goodness astounds us sometimes. And so today we thank you for the opportunity to honor you with our tithes and offerings, our gifts to the debt elimination, and our gifts to missions and mercy where we honor you by helping someone else. Bless now each gift and each giver. Let no one lack as a consequence of what they give today. Return to your sons and daughters as you see fit so that each one of us will have the testimony of our elders that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. We do thank you on this Sunday for victory in our finances. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen. Let's give unto our God. And while we're giving, as is their custom, the music ministry of our church is going to bless us and prepare us for the word of God. Receive them with great joy.
it, I could never repay you, Lord. Oh, but I'm sure going to praise you. Can you help me sing? Sunday of the month of March. Let's look into the Word of God this afternoon, and as we do, I invite your attention to the book of Mark, the New Testament Gospel as recorded by the writer of Mark at chapter 14. The New Testament Gospel as recorded by the writer of Mark at chapter 14. I want to read an extensive passage today. I want to read from verse 1 to verse 9, because I want you to see this picture of what happens as Jesus is making his way to the cross of Calvary. 
Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 1, concluding at the conclusion of verse 9. Hear the word of the Lord from the New International Version of God's Holy Word. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at, a ta at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, Jesus said. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them anytime you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Amen. Praise God for his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Many of us have been reading this passage, hearing about this passage for many years. Songs have been written about this passage to remind us of the woman who broke the alabaster box of perfume open and poured it on Jesus. Pastor, as I was reading this story again this week, I got drawn in at verse 6. When the Lord Jesus says, leave her alone, why are you bothering her? Here it is. She has done a beautiful thing to me. <laughs> For the time that is ours to share together on this Sunday afternoon, I want to talk from the subject, a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. When we get to Mark chapter 14, it's just a few mere days before the Lord Jesus gives his life as a ransom for many. At Mark chapter 14, we are moving inexorably toward the cross of Calvary with Jesus and watching the Lord Jesus as he intentionally, deliberately shows to all those around him that he is the son of the living God. Mark helps us throughout his gospel to try to conceal the messianic secret. But more people throughout the entirety of the gospel in each of the four gospels, to be sure, are getting to know that there's something unique, there's something different about that man named Jesus. And Mark does it, he displays it in such a rapid fire pace. From the beginning of his gospel all the way to chapter 14, Mark is moving quickly to show to us who Jesus is and what Jesus does. He is unlike the other gospel writers who take their time to make some points that are necessary to be made in their regard. No, Mark says, I got to get you to know who Jesus is by showing you what Jesus does. From the beginning of the gospel all the way to chapter 14, you will see how Mark deliberately shows to us the amazing things that Jesus does. It's so beautiful by the time you get to chapter 14 and you conclude that message I just read in your hearing from verse 1 to verse 9, Mark takes a quick shift and skips over a few days to get all the way to the last supper that the Lord Jesus has with his disciples. Mark wants you to see the big picture, the global perspective. He, unlike John or unlike Luke or Matthew, he doesn't have time in his, in his estimation for the details. He just wants you to get the big picture. Ain't nobody like Jesus. <laughs> and so he shows that all the way through his gospel. Maybe that's why it's the shortest gospel, even though it's the first recorded one, the first one that was written. And Mark 
shows us that Jesus Christ is someone special. After we finish with the woman with the alabaster jar, the alabaster box, we find Jesus at the table discussing with his disciples that this meal he is instituting is supposed to be the one that will be done in remembrance of him. He gives them the bread. He gives them the wine. He says the bread represents his body and the wine represents his shed blood. And he is his intentional mark is to make sure that we see how Jesus is up to something in this gospel. Now, my brothers and sisters, when you, when you take a gander at Mark's gospel, you ought to be enthralled with the fact that the Lord Jesus is a healer, that he's a great teacher, that he's a way maker, that he's a miracle worker. You ought to be enthralled with the fact that Jesus keeps doing things for people who even don't re request it. Even, even people who just show up to sit in a congregation to hear what he has to say get blessed in amazing ways because they are under the ministry and tutelage of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something about being in close proximity to Jesus. There's something about being able to spend a little time with the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the home of Simon the leper, there are several people who are spending time with Jesus. You'll see it. I just read it for you. There at the home of Simon the leper, the chief priests, the rulers have been conspiring, scheming, says the New International Version, to try to kill Jesus. They're trying to find a way to take him out. Un only problem problem is it's too close to the Passover and the Passover is a high and holy season for the Jews and so all of the devout Jews are coming around said the head to the holy city of Jerusalem so that they might be a part of this celebration and these chief priests and rulers know you better not mess with him right now because all these folk have been hearing about how he heals the sick all these folk have been experiencing him doing wonderful miracles in their regard so they choose not to bother him so Jesus heads to the home of Simon the leper it is said that he was once a leper and perhaps the Lord Jesus has healed him of his leprosy and now Jesus is in the home of this brother and there are several people around him including the disciples and here comes this sister and she begins to do something that is amazing in, in its own right. She does some things that no one even anticipated her doing. She takes a very expensive box jar of perfume. It is made from very expensive materials found in India. And she brings this into the proximity of the Lord Jesus Christ, opens it up, pours it all over him. And now she has begun to show him just how much she appreciates who he is and what he has done she wants him to know that there's nobody like Jesus nobody who can do what Jesus does and so she celebrates him not in a private covert manner but in public with all of these folk in this home at this dinner party so that everybody knows that she knows who Jesus is and she's grateful for what Jesus has done I guess I ought to ask somebody in here, do you know who he is? <laughs> do you know what he's done for you? Do you know what he's done in your life? You're going to need to hold on to that for the rest of this message because by the time we get to the end, I'm going to need you to identify yourself publicly in this house because if you can think of two or three or five or 12 things that the Lord has done for you this year, you ought to be able to show some sign. You ought to be able to show some sign. So, brothers and sisters, here comes this unnamed woman. This unnamed woman makes her way into the home of Simon the leper, and she does something that is most intriguing to me. It is so intriguing, not just to me. It must be intriguing to Jesus as well, because Jesus calls it, watch, a beautiful thing. Yeah, this is no ordinary thing. This is no trite or average experience. According to the words of Jesus, this is a beautiful thing. Can we talk about that for a little while? What must it take for the Lord Jesus to look at your offering and say that's a beautiful thing? What, what must it take for the Lord Jesus to look at you, what, what you bring into his holy presence and call it a beautiful thing? May I suggest that as we watch the movements of the text that what we find out first of all church family is that this is a beautiful act of stewardship yeah let the church say stewardship 
Yeah, that's almost a lost word in the church, isn't it? Stewardship. As a matter of fact, those of us who were in our church meeting this past Monday, we remember a little comically, comic, a little comic relief moment that happened while we were in church meeting. We were talking about how the Lord has abundantly blessed our church family and how the resources of our church are in abundance and God has blessed this church because you have been a blessing to the work of the ministry. And I comically said, I said, and that's not even, and that's without a stewardship series from the pastor. I haven't even preached a ser sermon series on stewardship since the pandemic began and still there are people on every row of the pews of this church who make sure that the work of this church is done with excellence and extravagance. I need to find somebody in here who knows that sometimes you've got to be one who exercises, expresses, exhibits your stewardship before the Lord. That's what this woman does. She brings this bottle of pure nard this bottle of perfume and she stewards it stewardship that's a good churchy word you need to know what it means this word stewardship literally suggests that you have the proper management and utilization of your personal resources keep listening don't you give up don't you give up I said that stewardship is the proper management and utilization of your personal resources it literally answers the question what are you going to do with what God has given you how are going how are you going to use what God has placed in your hands and this woman says when I think about who Jesus is and what Jesus has done my act of stewardship is to take this and give it to the Lord Jesus so that he knows what he means in my life okay let me put it this way it literally suggests church family that this woman takes this expensive perfume pours it all on Jesus because she wants to give Jesus her best okay if your pew partner, your roommate is not smiling or something right now, say the man talking to you, don't miss, don't miss this, don't miss this. I said that she wants to give Jesus her best, that when you are a steward of the resources that the Lord gives to you, you don't give him what's left, you give him what's best. <laughs> Can I find seven people in church this afternoon who can testify? When I think of how good God has been to me, how abundantly God has blessed me, I just can't give him the leftovers in my life. I've got to give him the best I can possibly give him. I can't just shout about it. I got to be about it. Oh, don't you fool yourself. You just can't come and shout and that's all. You got to make sure you present to God, not just your body as a living sacrifice, but your resources. And here, here, here it is. This woman says, I'm going to give God what is best. Give to Jesus what is best. Now, scholars suggest, Pastor Lawson, that this is no broke woman. Yeah, they say she is well-to-do. She may even be an affluent woman, which is why she has such expensive perfume. And so she may be an, an affluent woman, and she decides to open up this bottle of expensive perfume and not just give the Lord a dab of it. <laughs> not just give God a little bit of Y'all helping me preach my sermon. Thank you. She pours it all on Jesus. I like it. I like it. Now, church, if you were listening to me, you already heard me me when I read to you that what was in that bottle was worth a year's wages. So she just gave to Jesus what was worth one year of income to some people in that community. Now I just want you to think about what you make in one year. And let me ask you, are you willing to give it in one minute? That's what she does. In one minute she gives Jesus what has been at the cost of a year's wages. And when you think about what the Lord has done for you and how the Lord has blessed you sometimes you just got to be extravagant sometimes you got to be excessive sometimes you got to go beyond what other folk might think you need to do because what the Lord has done for you, she does for him what no one else would do even in that house. I suspect church family we need to understand that stewardship is all about making sure that your possessions don't possess you but you possess your possession.
What happened to all those amens I had a few minutes ago? I said, you got to make sure that your possessions don't possess you. You've got to possess your possessions. This is a woman who has significant possessions, somewhat like that sister on your road right now. Look towards some sister say, he talking about you, isn't he? You doing well. You well paid. Look at you. Look at them shoes on your feet. Oh, my goodness. You must be doing all right. I like that outfit you wore today. Look at them sisters on your road. And if that's not your testimony, say, I'm just waiting on the Lord. They that wait, they that wait, they that wait, they that wait. Come on, he's able to do it. If he did it for you, he can do it for me. He can do it for me. I wish I had some faith in this room right about now. So here it is. This woman is a good steward of her resources. She's steward. She decides to give to the Lord Jesus Christ that which would show just how much he means to her. And so she does it lavishly. She lavishly loves on the Lord with this expensive jar of perfume. That's a beautiful act of stewardship. But keep on watching the movements of the text because it seems to me that not only is there a beautiful act of stewardship in verse 4, but there's a beautiful act of sacrifice in verse 5. Somebody say sacrifice. I like this. It is what it means to be selfless. Uh, sacrifice literally suggests that you give what you have for the sake or benefit of another. Uh, okay. I'll I, I say it again. I said sacrifice is when we give what we have for the sake or benefit of another when you see when you see someone and you can benefit them by what you have you sacrifice what you have so that you can be a blessing to somebody else look at what happens in verse 5 your bible says that in verse 4 rather some of those present were saying indignantly to one another why this waste of perfume it could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor and they rebuked her harshly hold up wait a minute flag on the plate this woman is seeking to sacrifice to Jesus what she has of her her own resources and we find out that whenever you sacrifice there will always be skeptics yeah. it's, it's unfortunate Melanie that every time you seek to sacrifice for the benefit of somebody else everybody around you somebody around you has something to say about it have you ever noticed that folk always got something to say about what you doing but what, oh, but, but belongs to you this is <laughs> This is what trips me out about this. She didn't ask them, can I borrow your perfume? She didn't ask them, can I use some, can you loan me $5 to give to Jesus? She's taking what belongs to her and giving it to Jesus. Don't let your skeptics and your haters and your naysayers make you make a different decision about what you have chosen to do for the one who has loved you more than you could ever love yourself. I need 10 people in here who understand I can't let what skeptics and naysayers think or believe stop me from lavishly loving on Jesus who looked beyond my faults and saw my need. Somebody in church ought to thank God that there's this unnamed woman who teaches us that sacrifice is still in order. I like it. I like it. I like this. This business of sacrifice is intriguing to me because when you sacrifice, there's always a skeptic and watch what they say. Why this waste? Hold up. How you going to tell me that what I'm doing with what's mine is a waste to the one who has blessed my life? How in the world are you going to tell me that what I'm doing is a waste and it's intriguing that most detractors will say it's a waste when it comes to Jesus? I don't mean no harm. But it ain't a waste when you buying yourself another something. It ain't a waste when you are doing what you want to do when you and it has no consequence of eternality. It's not a waste when it's down at the rodeo. It's not a waste when it's at the park. It's not a waste when it's at the club. It's not a waste when you buying another pair of shoes that you know you don't need. But it's a waste when it comes to Jesus. Can I find seven people in here who can testify? He's been too good to me. Oh, I love this church. He's made too many ways for me. He's opened too many doors for me. Y'all excuse me, but when I think, you already know, of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. This is good, church. This is good. 
You can go fit, see 50 and that ain't a waste. You can go do this with your money, that ain't a waste. But when you give it to Jesus, it's a waste. Now, I like this. Because these brothers say, she's wasting. It could have been sold and given to the poor. Could have gotten a year's wages on this. It's a waste. Could have been done differently. It could have been done differently. And your Bible says, they rebuked her harshly. She hadn't asked anything of them. She hadn't asked anything. that She didn't ask for nothing from them. And here's the problem even the more. Matthew and John say that the folk who are doing the indignant rebuking are disciples. That's what I said when I read it. <laughs> Sometimes it's those who are close. Sometimes it's those in the inner circle. Sometimes it's those with a big Bible. Sometimes it's those with a cross on. Sometimes it's those with a nice title. Got the nerve to be talking noise about what you do with regard to the Lord Jesus. I heard somebody say it don't take all that. <laughs> but I came to tell you that the resolution of that message was it takes all of that and so much more. Can I find somebody in here who will help me re-preach Rep. May J's message from last week and say it takes all of that. All, all of my praise, all of my worship, all of my sacrifice, all of my stewardship. I know they've been trying to sit you down all service. We say, you just don't know, child. You just don't know. You just don't know. I know you're getting on their nerve. You keep standing up in front of them. Just look behind and say, I'm sorry. I apologize. Look up at the screen, baby. You just don't know. You just don't know. They doing like this. I say, I understand. If you need to move, move. But I, I got to haul out every now and then because you just don't know. You weren't there. You don't know when. You don't know where. You don't know how he made a way. You don't know how he brought me through. You don't know how he fixed it. Oh. When I was sick, he healed me. When I was broke, he paid my bills. When I was crazy, he put me back in my right mind. I got to bless him. I got to love on him. I got to sacrifice. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's all right. Say what you want to. That's all right. Suck your teeth if you want to. That's all right. Roll your eyes if you want to. That's all right. Talk about me after church if you want to. But watch what happens in the next verse. I ain't got to say nothing to you about what you think about me. Jesus will speak on my behalf. The Bible says... Jesus said, leave her alone. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Jesus told them jokers, leave her alone. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This is all about me. Leave her alone. Go sit down somewhere. Close your mouth if you don't mind. You don't like all this noise? Go somewhere else. We gonna get happy. We gonna get loud. We gonna celebrate. We gonna dance. We gonna sing. We gonna rejoice because he's been good. You let my founding pastor come up in here after 55 days of being out and you don't think I'm gonna get loud? Man, I wish you would. Wish you would look at me crazy. You talking about some people who got up off beds of affliction and they still got a little pain but they made their way anyway? You better ask somebody about it. I need some people in here who know God's been good to shout he's been too good to me. Yes, 
Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This, my brothers and sisters, is what happens when you recognize how good the Lord has been. This is what happens when you realize how many ways the Lord has made. It causes you to sacrifice. I like it. Even the Bible says we ought to give a sacrifice of praise. And sometimes you have to even make yourself get up and clap your hands and praise the Lord. The sacrifice of praise. Yeah. Pastor Lawson, I know what this weekend is. This is the weekend of the commemoration of Bloody Sunday. And I'm not going to go through all of what I went through in the first service. But this is a commemoration of Bloody Sunday. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put it up. This is a commemoration of Bloody Sunday. And uh, in, in 1965, there were people, beginning with Congressman John Lewis, who marched from Selma to Montgomery. And they did so to protest the obstruction of voting rights for Negroes in Alabama. And these 600 plus people decided to march over the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And when they marched over the Edmund Pettus Bridge, once they crossed over the bridge, they came in contact with these mounted police, these troopers, who decided they were going to trample them, beat them down in the streets, because they were protesting the fact that Jimmy Lee Jackson, a black man, had just been killed by the police. And they were protesting the injustice and the removal of voter rights from those individuals in Alabama. And these 600 people, led by John Lewis and others like him, decided that the stakes were too high for them to just sit around and do nothing when their people needed something that they could protest to provide. And even though they knew it would cause them some pain, they decided to sacrifice, Lord have mercy, for somebody else so that you and I might have the privileges that we enjoy right now. I want to talk to the people in here who are grateful for some people you never met, but they sacrificed so you can sit up in a cool congregation and give God glory. I want, I want to find the folk who, who can celebrate the fact that some people who died long time ago sacrificed so you can go to that school you went to and live in that community you live in and have that job you have right now. Can I find seven people in here who can thank God for unnamed individuals who sacrificed and got blessed? for you so you can sit in here looking all good on a Sunday afternoon okay if you don't want to thank God for them somebody thank God for your mama and your daddy thank God for your grandparents thank God for aunts and uncles thank God for siblings who sacrificed thank God for a preacher or a teacher or a leader who sacrificed thank God for a sister or brother who said I'm gonna give this up so you can have is there anybody in here okay you can't thank God for them thank God for a man named Jesus who one Friday afternoon sacrificed his life so that you and I might have access to life everlasting and life more abundant. Somebody say thank God for sacrifice. God for sacrifice. Well, I'm almost done. I got to go. My time is almost out. Can I give you one last thing and I'll be in my, in, ready to head to that table. I got four minutes to help you understand that it's not just a beautiful act of stewardship. And not just a beautiful act of sacrifice. But can I close when I tell you something about a beautiful act of support? Somebody say support. support. I just gave you a preview of coming attractions just about two minutes ago. Because I told you that although they rebuked her harshly, Jesus opened up his mouth and began to speak some words of support on her behalf. Now, now you got to catch this. Jesus hadn't said a word. The whole time, sister friend has been sharing with him. But when some haters start attacking, Jesus stands up and speaks up on her behalf. Huh? Aren't you glad that you have a savior who knows how to support you when you can't support yourself? Woo. I need to find some people in here who know that the Lord has fought some battles for you that you didn't know how you were going to win on your own. 
I'm, I'm trying to close. You all already get the picture, but can I find some people in here who can just look back over the shoulder of your life and say there was some stuff on the job, there was some stuff at the schoolhouse, there were some things in the community, there's some things in this nation that just ain't right and have not been right for a long time, but some kind of way the Lord Jesus shows up just when I need him most and he begins to speak up on my behalf and somebody can thank God for the support that the Lord knows how to give. Leave her alone leave her alone he began to say leave her alone she did the best she could she's using what she had to be a blessing to me and then he says this is she's done a beautiful y'all oh I love preaching this church you've got she's done a beautiful thing it's a beautiful look at the words that Jesus uses to describe her act of stead of, of selflessness and sacrifice and stewardship she's done a beautiful thing and then he begins to preach pastor Lawson he begins to preach to the disciples and all those detractors who are in the room he takes the text you can't see it when you read from the new international version but he takes a text out of Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 11 Deuteronomy 15 11 says the poor you'll have with you always but you won't have me with you always because he's already told them he's about to go to the cross but now keep reading what she said what he says about this woman he says this woman has done a good thing as a matter of fact fact she was preparing me beforehand for my burial oh, you catch it again she's preparing me beforehand for my burial this woman understands that this is no ordinary teacher he's no ordinary preacher she understands him to be the messiah the christ of god who's about to go to the to calvary's cross and give his life as a ransom for many and so the bible says she can see what the disciples can't see she discerns what the disciples can't discern she understands what those who've been up close with jesus for three years don't understand she begins to anoint his body for burial fast forward if you know anything about that story on Good Friday evening you know that they the Jews did not have time to prepare the body of Jesus for burial they did not have time because it was time for the Sabbath which began on Friday evening so because they did not have time to anoint the body they just put the body in, jo in Joseph's new tomb and when they put the body in there you'll recall on Resurrection Sunday those women were coming to the tomb with spices and with ointments because they were going to mummify in tomb they were going to properly make sure that that body was prepared for burial and Jesus says y'all may not know it but y'all not gonna have time to do it on Friday so she's doing it today so I'll be ready for what I'm about to do for you on Friday is there anybody in this church this afternoon who can thank God for some sisters who can see see stuff you can't see they understand some stuff you don't understand they discern some things you don't discern and the Bible says that Jesus then says what she just did today is going to be told everywhere the gospel is preached and it's going to be in memory of her that everybody's gonna know about this unnamed sister because she did what was necessary to be done to get me ready for burial as a matter of fact your pastor Marcus Cosby is gonna preach about her on the first Sunday of Women's History Month because she makes the women's history list of women who did some amazing things for the cause of Christ. Can I find somebody in here who can thank God that there have been some amazing sisters who did some amazing things and even when sexist brothers wanted to shut them down, Jesus stood up on their behalf and showed support that nobody else could provide. But this ain't just about sisters in here now because there's some brothers in here who've seen God support you when you couldn't handle life's balance challenges by yourself can I find somebody in here who's seen God make a way for you and seen the Lord open doors for you and seen the Lord fight battles for you he supported you when your family walked out on you he supported you when your job gave up on you he supported you when your health began to fail and you sitting in church on a Sunday afternoon and the truth of the matter is you don't look like everything you've been through I need 
need to find the people in here who can testify. The only reason I don't look as crazy as I possibly could look is because the support of the Lord Jesus Christ has held me up when I felt like going down. The support of Jesus Christ has strengthened me when I was weak along the journey. So y'all please excuse me if a celebration starts off right here. But every time I think about the support he gave me, it makes me want to holler and throw up both my hands. Every time he supported me when my money was out, I found out he'll supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Every time he supported me when tears were running down my face, I found out that even if weeping endures for a night, joy will come in the morning. Even every time those enemies were coming against me like a flood, he supported me. And I found out that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And is there anybody in here on a Sunday afternoon who can help me close this message and say all of my worship is because he keeps taking good care of me. All of my praise is because he keeps on making ways for me. Is there anybody who can celebrate that man named Jesus? Jesus, because every time you turn around, he keeps on making ways for you. Is there anybody in church today who can say, please excuse me, but I feel uh, like lifting him up. I feel like blessing his name. Don't get mad if my oil perf oh, and perfume gets on your nerve. I'm just trying to tell him thank you for every mountain he brought me over, for every valley he seen me through. I'm sorry if my perfume offends you, but you don't, you weren't there. You don't know how I got it through that thing. You don't know how I made it over that hump. You don't know how I survived when my loved one died, when my heart was broken, when my enemies were trying to get the better of me, when my family didn't understand me, when sickness was in my body and the doctors didn't know what to do. But look at me on March 3rd, 2024, in the cathedral of the sanctuary, lifting up holy hands and blessing the name of the Lord because he supported me. He made a way for me. He opened doors for me. He fought some battles for me. So somebody, anybody, everybody, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm closing church, but I ain't said this all month. Won't he make a way for you? Won't he open doors for you? Won't he provide for you? Shout yeah. keeps on doing beautiful things and so I got to do a beautiful thing for him to let him know how much I appreciate him oh child of God there's somebody in church who's been wrestling with whether or not you're supposed to be all sold out for Jesus Christ there's some people in your circle that don't understand why you do what you do people in your circle who say that don't make no sense that's a waste wasting your time on two hours 20 minutes in the parking lot going and coming seven minutes walking three minutes shuttle you're wasting your time but then you think about all those times when God snatched you out the clutches of the enemy. All those times when God put food on your table and clothes on your back, all those times when God forgave you and you told him you wouldn't do it again and you, all those times. So I got two and a half hours to tell him thank you. I got two and a half hours to tell him thank you. I've got two and a half hours to rejoice. And when you do, Jesus 
calls it a beautiful thing. Chapter 15, he's going to die. Chapter 16, he's going to rise again. But before all of that takes place, there's some people who understand that the Lord Jesus is worthy of extravagant sacrifice, stewardship, and you'll give it to him every day of your life. Listen, if you're able to stand, stand all over the church because somebody in here needs to give his or her life to Jesus Christ. Somebody in the sanctuary needs to make a decision for the Lord Jesus. Somebody in church today needs to say, oh, yes, Lord. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to live for you all the days of my life. If you're here on this Sunday afternoon, you say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. I need to give my life to Jesus Christ. Pastor, that's me. I need to become part of this church called Wheeler Avenue. I believe the Lord has led me to this place. They're already coming. Come on. Come on. Oh, the Lord, come on. Stand with me. Bless you. They're already coming. And so as they start walking, we're going to celebrate the fact that they're giving their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. And there may be somebody here today who says, Pastor, I've been struggling with whether or not I need to be really committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. I just showed you the picture of a sister who understood how necessary it was to give everything that she has to the Lord Jesus Christ so that she might be the one about whom the gospel continues to be preached. Come on, sis. Come on, my sister. God bless you. So glad you're walking this way. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Here they come. They're still moving. Come on, come on, come on. You can walk while I'm talking. It's all right. You can walk while I'm talking. Come on. We're waiting on you. We're looking for you. If they walk past you, start clapping your hands like you know they did a great, great and beautiful thing. Yep. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Maybe there's somebody else who says, Pastor, I'm saved, but I need a church home. And I believe the Lord has led me to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church to make this my church home so I can grow and develop and mature as a disciple of Jesus Christ. If that's you, start walking toward me right now. Come on, start walking toward me right now. Here they come, here they come. Praise the Lord. Come on, do a beautiful thing, do a beautiful thing. Do a beautiful thing. Do a beautiful thing. God bless you, God bless you. Do a beautiful thing. Exchange his life from, come on, God bless. Church, you're not making enough noise to celebrate these people. Come on, come on, let everybody in the church rejoice when people get saved and they walk down the aisles of this church. God bless you. You gave, you gave that I might live. You gave that I might be set free. Yeah, God bless you, man. God, exchange your life for mine. God bless you, man. Your life for mine. What a wonderful thing. Come on, come on. Take your time. 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 You've done. You've done. You gave. Come on, they're still coming. You should still be celebrating. You gave. You gave. That I might be set free. God bless you. Proud of you. Exchange your life for mine. What a wonderful thing. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. You gave. I'm talking about Jesus. That high. If you're in the sanctuary, start moving even the more. I see you there. Start moving even the more. Reverend, Reverend Roberts is waiting on you. My feet set free. Exchange your life for mine. Hallelujah. I see you. Bring on Nigga Howard. Let's bring them on, Deacon Howard. What a wonderful thing. Yeah, you've done. You've done. That I might live. That I might live. Who else? Who else? Come on, come on. You gave that I might be set free. Keep moving in the sanctuary. Come on in the sanctuary. We're waiting on you. Exchange, exchange. Life for life. Life for life. What a wonderful
wonderful thing. What a glorious thing. What a glorious thing. They're celebrating. We may as well celebrate with them. Yeah. What a marvelous thing. Turn towards somebody and ask him, is the pastor waiting on you? Ask him, is the pastor waiting on you? I, look, I saw that woman. She said, no. Good. Give him a good answer back. Ask him, is the pastor waiting on you? Say, if so, I'll walk with you. I'd be glad to. God bless you. Say, I'll walk with you. I'd be glad to. There you are. Come on. Come on, man. God bless you. God bless you. Here they come. Here they come. It just took a little evangelism. Just took a little evangelism. God bless you. Ask, her, ask somebody else. Ask him. Is the pastor waiting on you? Ask him. Ask him. If they say no, say praise the Lord. If they say yes, say I'll walk with you like these other folk are walking with these people. I'll walk with you. Can't walk for you, but I will walk with you. If they don't say anything, make sure you know before we leave here. Ask him again. I see some brothers moving in the balcony. We're going to shout all over this house. That's four men, four men of God. Come on, brothers, come on. Here comes a sister from this side. Come on, sis. God bless you. That I might live. Happy birthday. Look at it. I love it. You gave. You gave. That I might be set free. Exchange your life for mine. I see you coming. Come on, we're waiting on you. What a glorious thing. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what a glorious thing. What a glorious thing. What a marvelous thing. What a marvelous thing. What a marvelous thing. I see got time to wait on you take your time look at what the Lord is doing in this church praise the Lord for every one of you who walks this way praise the Lord for every one of you coming this way we celebrate you this afternoon in the sanctuary we celebrate with you those of you who have walked out the hours of the sanctuary praise the Lord for your decision what a wonderful thing what a wonderful thing what a glory What a glorious day. What a marvelous day. What a marvelous day. Let the church say, You done. You done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, bring that young man this way. Come on, bring him this way. That's your grandson, Rip Linda? She's been praying for that man right there. I'm proud of you. Praise the Lord. She's been praying for you, but happy for you. That's your son, Minister Lewis? His son has come to be a part of our church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To all of you who stand before me here, come on, Deacon. Bring them on, Deacon Allen. Praise the Lord for you, my brother. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. To all of you who stand before me here in the cathedral and to all who stand with the Reverend Roberts there in the sanctuary, I want each one of you to know that we are so excited that the Lord just added to our church the extensions of each and every one of you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. So excited.
that out of all the places where the Lord could have sent you to either continue or commence your Christian journey, he sent you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm excited to serve as your pastor. These brothers and sisters all around you are excited to be your family. We are brothers and sisters, one to another around here. We're your family. We thank God for the privilege, and I'm excited about the great things that are going to happen in your future because of the decision that you made today. Welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. God bless you, one and all. God bless you. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Listen, are the three of you together? Okay, I want the three of you to turn that way. I want you to turn this way. And I want all those on this, my left-hand side, to go toward uh, the Reverend Don Floyd, who has her hand extended to you. And all of the rest of you go to, toward the Reverend Boone, who has his hands extended to you. And all, all of us in the Lord's Church are going to celebrate those here in the cathedral and those in the sanctuary. Look at them in the sanctuary. Come on and praise God. Praise God. And the Lord added to the church daily those that would be saved. God bless you. Those who would be saved. What, 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 what? What a wonderful day. Yeah, yeah. What a glorious day. What a glorious day. seated if you choose to be as we now head to the table of the Lord our leaders are coming to stand with me and as they do we have the awesome privilege of headed to that second scene of Mark chapter 14 where we come to the table and remember what Jesus Christ has done for each one of us we do this in remembrance of him our leaders stand with us because what Jesus did in that upper room was to enact what we reenact today. Prior to the pandemic, we take from the table, giving to the leaders, the leaders would then distribute it among ourselves, as the Lord Jesus tells them to do in one of the Gospels, divide this among yourselves. We understand that we've had to make a modification today, but what we do is to stand as those who were in that upper room with Jesus and serve those who are in this room today because Jesus told us to do it perpetually, perennially. And as much as you always do this, you do so in remembrance of me. And so here we come again on the first Sunday of March, as will be our custom again on the first Sunday of April. But even before that, on Good Friday and on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday after Palm Sunday, we'll do the same thing because Jesus says, as often as you do this, you show forth my death until I come again. For it is by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have been saved. So our champion of deacons is going to consecrate these elements in prayer. And then if there are those who have not yet received the elements, you will be served by these leaders. And then we'll commune one with another together. So hold those elements until all of us together are able to commune. Brother Chan. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, Creator, Ruler, Sustainer of heaven and earth, God, we thank you for the marvelous thing, you know, the beautiful thing that you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, that your Son, Jesus, died on a cross for our sins. He died so that we might live. Because we live, Lord, we remember today that Jesus sacrificed his life so that we would not have to be condemned. And so, God, we thank you for Jesus' sacrifice. We thank you, God, that he was placed on a cross, took in all of our sins, all of the guilt, all of the shame. And so, God, we thank you for the blood that he shed, the blood that covers us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He did it once for all, and we are grateful that Jesus died. We thank you, Lord God, for these elements that represent that sacrifice, the bread that represents his broken body that was beaten, battered, and bruised for us. 
and for the blood that was shed. For without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. So thank you, God, for the great thing, the beautiful thing that Jesus has done. On this day, we thank you as we remember. We ask that you bless these elements, the bread. Please bless the wine for our use. And then bless us, God, for your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you've not yet been served, if you did not receive your elements upon entry into the Lord's church, just slip up your hand, please, and these leaders will serve you post-haste. Just slip up your hand and hold your hands high until all of our leaders have served you. And as they're preparing to serve you and as they are serving you, we'll sing this great song of the church that for decades has reminded us of the abundant love of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and so too does this song say, that there is no greater love. Let's sing together. good news on this Sunday afternoon. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Well, church, it's time for us to remember. Seems like we already remember <laughs> what the Lord has done for us. We hold in our hands a symbol of the broken body of Jesus Christ. It is true, as Isaiah reported, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. So as we remember the broken body of Jesus Christ, let's eat the bread together.
We hold in our hands this cup that represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The hymn writer knew exactly what to express to us when asking questions such as, what can wash away my sin? <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? You know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So as we hold these cups in our hand today, we remind ourselves of the shed blood of Jesus Christ that not only covers our sins, but washes them all away. So this Sunday afternoon, as we take of this cup, making our way into the month of March, let's do so in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's drink together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, great God, for the love that you've demonstrated toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you for the privilege now of remembering what you have done. And as we leave from this place this afternoon, we leave rejoicing because we recognize that you keep doing amazing things in each one of our lives. So now will you bless my sisters and my brothers as we go. Bless your sons, your daughters as we go. May we make a difference for you in the month of March, even more than we did in the month of February. May our light shine before men and women that they may see our good works and glorify you, our Father in heaven. Be with us now as we depart this place. Keep us safe, will you please? Till we get back together again keep us sane if you please even in this insane world keep us set apart for your purposes sanctified for your use and we promise that we'll come back at the next time lifting up holy hands and making a joyful noise unto the lord bless now each one of your servants as we depart from the sanctuary from the cathedral those We'll even turn off a device now who's been watching with us, worshiping with us from distant places. And may all that we do be to your glory and to your honor. And we ask this in the strong name that is above every name. Even the name Jesus Christ do we pray. And let all of God's people together say hallelujah. Let the church say amen. And will you maintain your positions? I see the balcony moving. You may move, but those in the, on the first floor of the cathedral, will you please maintain your positions? Our pastors, our founding pastor's health has been compromised. You can continue to play. Has been compromised, and so he needs to depart first so we can keep him safe and healthy. And uh, it looks like we can't take the side out. Yeah. Okay, we can take front. We can take that center out. That's cool. But as he is leaving, will you celebrate the man of God who has been so good to us at Wheel Avenue? Amen. Celebrate his daughters who are with his, right here, with him by his side. Celebrate his family and the care team that's taking care of our founder every single day. We thank God for them. Let me thank you for your patience on this first floor. I know that many of us, we weren't ready to make a da mad dash to the parking lot, but thank you for waiting so patiently because we want to make sure that our gym, our jewel is well taken care of. Amen? Amen. We can't hug on him. We can't love on him like we'd like, but we can see him as he makes his way from this place. All right, now we're going to sing together as we prepare to leave. The ushers are going to make, help us to depart from the rear of the first floor and then the front of the first floor cathedral will leave together. Those in the sanctuary, they're already gone. They're on 610 already, but we thank God. <laughs> but we thank God for all of you. God bless you, my father's children. Go in peace.